morning, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to Friday. Hope you guys have a kick-ass weekend planned. I do not. I am going to keep re recovering from the cold I have and uh, just chilling, I guess. Although I am going to get out in the garage and start working in it, cleaning it up, and getting all that ready. That's a whole different video. Anyway, today's video. I've been thinking a lot about this. I did a video a couple days ago about all the dealerships that are closing. Like, we traveled the country this summer, um, as most of you guys know, and there were a lot of Harley-Davidson dealerships that closed, changed hands, a lot of big corporations buying up all the Harley-Davidson dealerships, and uh, then we were just in the Bahamas, and the dealerships in the Bahamas were closed. And then we went to Cozumel, and uh, the dealership at Cozumel was closed. So, all these dealerships are closing. Um, all bike sales are down. Now, I know a lot of that is due to economy, but uh, I was thinking something else. I think Harley Davidson has lost its cool. Harley just isn't cool anymore. That's what I was saying about all of the, like, the t-shirt shops that are even closed, right? Used to, people from all over the country would come into a, a port like Cozumel, and they would go to the Harley dealership, and they'd buy a Harley shirt because they wanted a Harley shirt from Cozumel. Um, but the thing was, they wanted a Harley shirt. And I think that has dramatically shifted. I think that um, wearing Harley shirts, hats, shoes, just isn't viewed as cool anymore. Because I think the company isn't viewed as cool anymore. Let's face it. Their best-selling bikes are essentially minivans, Suburbans, um, when you look at the style of bike, right? If you're taking motorcycles um, and you compare them to cars, uh, basically their number one selling bike is a minivan and a Suburban, right? And it's uh, got a big fairing on it, a stereo, and all the gadgets and gadgets and doodads and bags and trunks and all that stuff, right? So if you were to equivalent, equivalent, I just made a new word, equivalent. Anyway, if you were to look at that, that basically is the equivalent of a, a big SUV or a minivan. So that's their number one selling bike. Um, you think about that. Is that something you would take and make a movie around? Like, I mean, look at Harley Davidson, the Marlboro Man, right? They had this iconic bike in there that everybody knows from everywhere. Look at, um, look at Terminator 2, right? It had the fat boy in there. But there are all these iconic bikes, right? None of them, none of them were these style bikes. Just not on work. But I feel like they have lost that cool factor. Now, they still have that functionality factor, right? Um... They still have the name, but that's all they have now, right? Remember when it used to be about Harley Davidson was about freedom and rebellion and, you know, and it wasn't the bike that everybody wanted and uh, it was just different, right? It had this history. It was American made. Um, it was like, it goes against everything that was, what do I want to say? It went against everything that was practical in the motorcycle world, right? It was expensive. It was loud. Um, it needed a lot of maintenance. Like, it was the rough-and-tumble motorcycle. Um, and, uh, you know, it didn't make sense, right? When you could buy a Honda that would do the same thing, last longer, be cheaper, um, but the Honda would never, ever, 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 ever be as cool right? And so there was that cool factor of being on a Harley Davidson. And I feel like that is what they've lost. I feel like everybody views them now as this greedy corporate entity that uh, has taken American made and now is making it over in other countries. They're bringing in parts. And don't get me wrong, I've, I've said this before, I understand it is a global marketplace. And I understand that, uh, you know, that is the way of the world. But You've took something that you've bragged about for 120 years, and now you're changing it. And you don't expect your audience and your crowd to, you expect them to accept that. Um, and I just don't feel like they're going to, right? When you go buy a shirt and it's made in Taiwan, and you go buy a jacket and it's made in China, and like all of the stuff that Harley's known for and has been known for for 120 years is going away. 
And so they've lost that cool factor. Now you throw in the fact that they lost the cool factor and they're the, one of the most expensive motorcycles out there. Um, most everybody says that their technology is lacking. Um, their minivans aren't as good as the other minivans out there. Um, and when you see the specs, it's hard to argue with that, right? Most people are like, I have to buy the motorcycle. Then I have to spend 10 grand to make the motorcycle what I want it to be by the time I change the exhaust and the seats and, you know, all the stuff, the handlebars and all the stuff that you normally change, right? So they have lost that it factor, that cool factor. They're not the cool kids on the block. They're not the cool brand name to rock. Um, people are just sick of it, right? So now they've got competition from Indian, which is another American made company, at least as much American made as Harley Davidson is, right? So they have these challenges. Then you have the CEO and the board members who have a completely different outlook on the future of the business and their customers um, as they should, right? When they're talking about, we wanna be all electric in 10 years. Are you fucking kidding me? There isn't a percentage of your customers that want you to be electric in 10 years. Now, I don't mind if you build an electric motorcycle, as long as you know you're not targeting me. I rode the live wire. The live wire was a fucking blast to ride. It was impractical. It was of no use to me, but I did take it out for a demo ride and I had an absolute ball riding it. So I'm sure that there is a crowd out there that that'll fit into, but you're spending millions and millions and millions of dollars to take a company completely, completely less cool than it already is. They're literally sucking the cool <clears throat> out of their brand that's their problem that is their problem that is what has sold them all these years even when they had shitty amf bikes um what sold them was it was harley fucking davidson and it was fucking cool and they are sucking the coolness out of every little aspect of the company and expecting us to all just be like you know what it's harley davidson it doesn't matter if they're not cool anymore well i think they're learning and they're gonna learn that that is just not going to work it's not going to work with the old generation it's not going to work with the new generation because uh the new generation, life is expensive. They have less expendable money, and you're wanting them to spend major bucks on something that just isn't even cool anymore. <clears throat> Think about that. When you guys are designing your bikes and all, I mean, if you're designing uncool shit, charging way more than you should, uh, and you don't have all of your brand loyalists even telling the next generation that, that, that Harley-Davidson is cool, then you guys are screwed. You're screwing yourselves. I don't know how to help you, but uh, that is one thing that I have observed over the past year. And uh, I've been wondering, I've been trying to put my finger on exactly what I think. I think that's it. Harley Davidson just isn't cool anymore. They've lost their cool, their it factor, and uh, the company isn't headed in the right direction. So we'll see how this all turns out. Anywho. My bikes, I'm fine with. They're old. They're still cool to me. I love riding them. But, uh, yeah, I don't know that I would buy a new one anytime soon. Anywho, that's it for today. Thank you all for hanging out. And we will see you all tomorrow.